Today's video lecture is going to focus on a topic that is new for IB Year 1 students this year. The topic today will be linear demand equations. As we learned in previous lessons, demand for any good can be expressed in either a table or in a demand curve. Today, however, we're going to talk about how demand can be expressed using linear equations. Let's consider the demand for pizzas. Before we can draw a demand curve, we must consider the demand function for pizzas. Any demand function will look like this. First, we have the quantity demanded, illustrated as QD. Secondly, we have what is called the autonomous level of demand, which is expressed as A in our demand equation. The B in a demand equation, in this case negative B, tells us the responsiveness of consumers to a change in P, which tells us the price. So any demand equation can be expressed using this simple formula. Quantity demanded equals A minus BP. The negative sign in front of our B value is evidence that the change in quantity will always be inversely proportional to a change in price. So as the price of pizzas increases, the quantity demanded will decrease accordingly, which of course uh, re relates to the law of demand the inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. Let's consider the following demand function for pizzas. Assume that the quantity demanded for pizzas equals 800 minus 60 times the price of pizzas. Below we have a demand schedule for pizzas. Using this demand equation, we can actually fill in the demand schedule, which would allow us to plot a demand curve. Imagine the price of pizzas is zero dollars. At a price of zero, the quantity demanded is simply QD equals 800 minus 60 times zero. Of course, at a price of zero, we can therefore assume that the quantity of pizzas demanded is 800. Notice that this is equal to our autonomous level of demand as seen in the demand equation above. The autonomous level demand of demand which is our A variable for pizza's demand function, is the amount of output that would be demanded if the price of the good were equal to zero. Now assume that the price of pizzas rises to $2. At a price of $2, the quantity demanded would be equal to 800 minus 60 times the new price of $2. This equals 680. So at a price of $2, we can see that the quantity demanded has decreased to 680 pizzas. We can continue adding different prices into the demand equation to find the quantities demanded at various prices. If the price goes to $4, the new equation is 800 minus 60 times 4, which equals 560 pizzas. Let's continue solving for the various quantities demanded at the various prices. Here we have completed our demand schedule using the demand equation of QD equals 800 minus 60P. Notice the relationship between the price of the good and the quantity demanded. As the price of pizzas increases, as we see in our left column, the quantity demanded decreases, as we see in our right column. Clearly, this reflects the inverse relationship explained by the law of demand. Also notice that for every $2 increase in price, the quantity demanded falls by exactly 120 units. This, of course, corresponds with the B value in our demand equation, which, is, which basically says that for every $1 increase in price, the quantity demanded falls by 60 units. Given that our demand schedule increases the price in $2 increments, it's therefore logical that for every $2 increase in price, quantity demanded falls by 120 units. The next thing we'd want to do is actually plot a demand curve using the figures from our demand schedule derived from our de demand function. This should be very easy. Let's just choose two points from our demand schedule to plot on our axis here. Let's put the point or the quantity demanded that would be demanded at a price of zero. Clearly 800 pizzas are demanded at a price of zero. Now, since this is a linear function, we really only need to choose two points on our demand schedule in order to derive our demand curve. So let's go up to a price of 10 and plot the quantity demanded at a price of 10. 
as we can see, at $10, 200 pizzas would be demanded. Now, we can connect these two points, and what we will have is our linear demand curve. The demand curve here is a graphical representation of the demand function QD equals 800 minus 60P. The autonomous level of demand of 800 is shown by what is called the Q intercept. 800, which is the A value in our demand function, tells us the point on the quantity axis at which the demand curve will intercept the quantity axis. The negative 60 in our demand function tells us the slope of the demand curve. For every $1 increase in the price, the quantity demanded will decrease by 60 units. Conversely, for every $1 decrease in the price of pizzas, the quantity demanded increases by 60 units. Hence, the inverse relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded. In our next video lecture, we will explore what happens to a demand curve, a demand function, and a demand schedule when either the A value which is known as the Q-intercept, or the autonomous level of demand changes, or when the B-value, which is the slope, indicating the responsiveness of consumers to changes in price, changes. How will this affect the demand curve when one of these two variables changes? That will be our next lecture. Thank you very much.